Ah, uh, yes, hello, dears. This is the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective, and it is a pleasure and an honor to have an opportunity to uh, once again connect with, with many of you and some of you for the very first time. So um, for those who are new, let us just tell you that we are working on you energetically with you alongside your own guides who are here. Uh, there are a number of, of angelic guides and a number of species who are represented here this evening who are checking out what it is that's going on as we're sharing stellar wisdom. And they are going to be coming through with us throughout the evening. So you may find that our energy changes slightly. You may notice a subtle shift because as we talk about some of these other star systems, some of these other beings are going to be joining us. So you're getting it straight from the horse's mouth, as it were. And they are very excited to share their perspective, to share their wisdom about their system with you. And as we go here, we're going to try to keep it in a somewhat linear format for you this evening. But we will go off on tangents and we do this with intent because it keeps you out of the linear mind. Because the information that you are receiving in order for you to fully process it, you've got to be in your heart center. Your heart center doesn't have any of the distortions. Your heart center doesn't have any of the beliefs that the mind has about your true history. Because the history that you've been given, the history that you've been sold, is not your true history. Your history, the history of this planet, is hundreds of thousands of years old. It's not 6,000. And you are just beginning to reawaken to some of this knowledge that you are not uh, simply beings who started out uh, and evolved on this planet. Uh, your DNA was altered to assist with the experiment that was going on called planet Earth and we'll talk about that in a moment. And there are many many beings from outside of your solar system who are participating with events, who have been, always have been, and who continue to do so to this day in a very active way with your planet. But much of the information has been manipulated because many of these beings are utilizing your energy. They're utilizing your ingenuity, your creativity, and your connection to source because they've lost the ability to connect with source. So, one of the first things here that we want to discuss is Earth as the grand experiment. Now, there have been two previous experiments in the galaxy to try to undergo the game of integration. So there was a point where higher beings sat around and thought, wouldn't it be fun to go into density and see if we could come out of it in duality? Wouldn't that be an interesting game? And so you all decided to do it. You were the ones who came up with the idea. And you were the very ones who are playing it out here on Earth. Now, the previous two experiments didn't go so well. And we learned from them. So when Earth was deemed suitable for the experiment, she was deposited with genetic material from thousands and thousands of worlds many, many, many species. And along with the genetic material comes all of the emotional coding, comes all of the emotional experience of these planets and of these species. We call Earth the planet of emotion. It is unlike any other planet in the entire universe because your range of emotion is vast. You've got extremely high highs and very low lows and everything in between. In other sectors of the galaxy, and this is why the previous two experiments didn't go so well, or at least one of the reasons, is because the emotional range wasn't very grand. Now, when you don't have a lot of emotional range, it means that your ability to be flexible, your ability to pull in new ideas, new inspiration, to be creative, is somewhat limited. Yes, you have a focused existence and you get to really examine and explore something in its totality. But when you're trying to go through the, the process of integration, and what do we mean by that? 
We mean letting go of judgment. We mean your ability to see that your perception of light and dark is an illusion, that both are part of source energy, and it's a fracturing of source energy itself. So you are unifying the light and the dark once again to its divine state. So when you don't have a lot of emotional range and you're trying to go through this process of integration, it can be really challenging. So if you've got more options and more emotions to kind of work your way through, it gets much, much easier. Because there are variations and you've got a lot more information that's being stored in the genetic material that you have access to. Now, the planet herself is a library. So all of the species that are living on your planet, the insects, the reptiles, the felines, the birds, all of their information, all of their experiences are recorded and stored within Earth. You have access to the Earth library. So when you have species donating their genetic material and let's just look here for a moment at the felines. The felines have given their genetic material. They're being represented on the planet here. Those planets outside of your solar system that donated their genetic material, you can then access all the records about their experiences. Now there are feline human hybrids and this is where part of your own genetic material comes from. There are five seed races that donated their genetics to create you, the modern human. And those are the feline, the reptilian, the humanoid, the bird people, all right, and uh, the Tolarians. And the genetic material was given so you have all of these experiences to pull from. Now this is really important because this also sets up your game. And as you're going through this process of ascension, as you are increasing your vibration, because Earth is going through the end of the cycle. Earth is completing this 26,000 cycle, year cycle. And as you come to the end, you're integrating everything that you learn through the cycle. Now, because Earth is the experiment, when you couldn't work things out in other star systems, say, let, let us give you the example of the Sirius star system or the Lyran star system, it doesn't matter because there are feuds in both, but when they couldn't work it out, all right, so you have one planet warring against another because, in, in particular, in the Syrian star system because of competition. All right, this idea that if somebody has opposing views from you, that they're a threat. All right, so they've got to be extinguished. Does, does this sound familiar to anything that's going on on your planet? <laughs> so when they couldn't work it out, they sent representatives, beings who had incarnated into that system to Earth to work it out here. And so here you are. You may have very well been in the Sirius star system and had those experiences. And you now are playing that game with the very same people that you had problems with, or you perceived yourself to have problems with, because it's all really a game anyway. And you're playing it out on a smaller scale. Now it's not planet against planet, but rather individual working with individual. And it becomes much, much easier for you to try to work through it at the individual level. So when you work it out here, you're then able to send that information off to those other star systems so that they can integrate the knowledge and the wisdom. Now we'll talk about time here a bit later, but those other lifetimes are all concurrent, they're all going on now. And so you're sending information off to other aspects of yourself and to your genetic lines and helping them to also go through the process of integration. So as we were saying, you're going through this 26,000 year cycle. And if you want to think of the beginning and the end of a cycle like a start and a finish line on a track, there is a band of very high frequency energy that you move through. We call it the photonic band because it's composed of photons, high 
frequency light that contains information that allows you to go through this process of integration. So when you come to the end of the cycle, you are able to uh, really re-access everything that you've learned, learn how to integrate it before moving on to the next step, into the next cycle. And that's what you're in the midst of experiencing right now. This is what you consider to be 2012. It's a window, it's not a particular date, and you're in the midst of this transition at this moment. Most of you just consider it to be life. Life seems a bit faster. Life seems a bit more hectic. But you are learning as you're walking through it to integrate it. Now, any questions on what we've just started? Because we're going to cover a lot of ground here and we want to make sure that you all are feeling comfortable because this can trigger a lot in your vehicles. It can trigger a lot of uh, issues of manipulation, control issues, abandonment issues. It can also activate uh, a bit of homesickness, if you will. So we want to make sure you all are doing well. First, take a nice deep breath. And as we always say, take what resonates, leave the rest behind, because we are presenting you with a version of history. It is not the only version of history. It is our version that we are sharing with you at this time in order to move you forward as we see you are requesting energetically, vibrationally, so that we may be of support to you. Now the version of the story may change a bit as you change. As you're ready, as you grow and expand, you're ready for a new version of the story. So take what resonates, leave the rest behind. Now, your true history, we're going to share bits and pieces of it, but the full picture, each and every one of you is going to start to activate within yourselves when you're ready. Because if you are just given history, it's going to be really hard for you because there's been so much manipulation in the information that you're not going to know what to trust. So until you are really getting it through yourselves, you're not really going to get a complete picture. So we're going to give you some bits and pieces and places to start and we encourage each and every one of you to go within, to look within, to go within the Akashic records, the energetic records that are available to you. Each and every one of you has access to these Akashic records. You've just forgotten that you have the library card as we like to say. <laughs> so now you're going to pull out the library card. You're going to go to the librarian because there is a librarian. There are beings who specialize in helping beings find records and information. Isn't that helpful? <laughs> so they're there to assist you. So you can call on them. And they will do their best to help you find the appropriate record that is a vibrational match for what you're looking for. So any questions so far? I've got a question. Yes. In some of the recordings I've heard you say that not only are we at the end of a 26,000 year cycle, but also a universal cycle? Yes. Are you able to say how long that cycle is? Can we comprehend that? Well, what we mean by the end of a universal cycle, is it, is it literally counting the revolutions? No. The reason it's the end of a universal cycle is because when you learn to go through this process of integration, and you're sharing all that information with the rest of the universe, it will change the universal game so dramatically that the game will be finished. It, it's like um, in one of your board games, you know, going directly to go. All right, do not stop. You are moving ahead, jumping ahead. So it will alter the entire game. And that's why it's not so much that it is an actual end of a cycle. But we tell you that because it makes it easier for the mind to perceive than to understand working holographically. Now with holography, and the way we're using it to describe it to you is that you, as an individual, are part of a whole. And any time you make a change within your field, it shows up in every other part of the whole. As the whole changes, it shows up in your field. So if you take an image and you, sh and you cut it into 20 pieces, each of those 20 pieces are going to contain the whole image. And as you change each individual one, or if you change one, it will show up in the other 19. 
So as you learn how to let go of judgment, you send the information, the how-to, off to those other aspects of yourself who can receive the information. And so you will change the universal game because you will change or help them to change their own perspective. It's kind of exciting. And this is in part why this is considered to be a grand experiment. It's never happened where a planet has gone through the ascension process with conscious beings on it before. We tried one or the other, but never the two together. And never on a planet that had the emotional range that you have. And this is why there are so many beings who are interested in what's going on. This is why there's so much stellar support, so much angelic support. Because we understand just how unique this opportunity is and how transformative it can be. Now, we will say that there are timelines on which the project, the experiment, is not succeeding. But the ones that we are dealing with, you, the version that we're having a conversation with, you are going through the ascension process. Because there are infinite probabilities, infinite ways to have experience. And down here where you are, in the linear mindset, you think that there is only one version of reality and that's all that exists. But in actuality, there are multiple versions, infinite versions, that are going on right beside you. And you constantly move back and forth between these versions at will as you adjust your frequency, as you adjust your vibration. But because you are processing reality through the mind, you think that you're only on one timeline. You don't catch the fact that you have shifted. Now, occasionally you will experience deja vu, and that is, a, is an indication for you that you've shifted timelines. Now, your shift in perception, your shift in belief, your shift in frequency is usually pretty subtle. So your version of reality doesn't change typically in a very, very dramatic way. It's usually pretty subtle. You're not going to go from a version of the planet that didn't experience say 9-11 to one that did right or one that didn't rather it's not going to be that dramatic because that would have changed everything that came after in a, a far more dramatic way it would have changed a lot of your social freedoms and how you're operating and your development where your focus for technology went so it would have created a very different timeline. And it has created a very different timeline. You're just not perceiving it. At least not this limited version of you that's having the third dimensional experience. Now your higher self is observing all of this. Your higher self is able to witness and participate in multiple versions of reality at once. But the ego, this, this part of you that's having this limited existence, can't see it. And that was the whole setup of the game. This is, this is part of the beauty of the third dimension, that you, you can't see it. You get to think that you are separate from source, that you're separate from everyone else, that you're a unique being that's not connected. In the higher realms, we see ourselves as part of a whole. Never do we perceive ourselves as being alone. We can see ourselves as being unique aspects of the whole but we know that we are still part of the whole and we feel and experience everything that the whole experiences. So for you to have this illusion and to hold it down here is quite unique and it's, it can also be quite challenging. But this is the game of dissension. That's what you came for, to have a limited perspective. The other thing we'll say here right now is that as you go through this process of ascension, don't be in such a rush to get to the other side. You already know what that experience is like to have a multidimensional experience of reality. What you don't know and what we are all learning from you is how to go through this process of ascension. So what you're in the midst of, the, the bits and pieces here that make you feel uncomfortable, that make you feel antsy in your body, the times that you're feeling depressed, the times that you're feeling um, overwhelmed, this is the really good stuff. 
this is what you came for. And this is what you are learning to work your way out of. So if you can have appreciation for all those moments when you're feeling those lower frequencies, one, that's going to help you to shift out of the lower frequency, but two, it will help you reframe it and help you to see that really it, it is all just a game. In each and every one of you leave your body at night and you are giving reports. You're all very, very busy. So you are going from council to council, from meeting to meeting, because remember in the higher realms, you're all part of a collective. You're all part of a council. So you are giving your friends information about what's really going on because unless you are incarnated into a vehicle into a dimension you cannot have that very dimensional experience you're going to have the experience for where your vehicle is if you've got a physical form or where your level of consciousness is residing in our case because we we are beings of light so we can only perceive reality through the ninth dimensional filter except when we channel that is the one exception we get a little sneak peek because our energies are blending with the channel but for most beings what they're doing is just observing and they don't really understand your motivation what your subtext is what thoughts are going on so when you leave your body at night your friends turn to you and they say well you know I watched you today and you had the opportunity to take this great leap of faith and you didn't do it what happened <laughs> And you say, all of a sudden, I was overwhelmed with this fear of being abandoned. I thought, all my friends are going to leave me. And so I couldn't do it. And they say, oh, all right. Now we understand. Because we couldn't see it. All right? Because you're running those emotions. And your emotions, again, we can't tell you how fabulous they are, these wide ranges of emotions that you experience. And that's a hard one for you all to get, that you're range of emotion is, is, is vast. You know, you can't really comprehend what it would mean to have five emotions and that's it. But there are many planets who maybe have a dozen or say, for instance, they only focus or the system likes to learn and play with certain emotional ranges, the Cassiopeian system. And we'll talk about some of the systems here as we go, but the Cassiopeian system likes to focus on love and variations of love. You know, so uh, to a Cassiopeian who decides to incarnate to Earth and they're only used to feeling love, wow! You can imagine it can be quite challenging for a Cassiopeian to come down here and feel all the polar opposites of love. But the Cassiopeian, because they have so much experience with the frequencies of love, can also find it very easy to get back to love. They can, they can express a lot of it because they're experts at it. They know exactly the subtleties of all of those frequencies, the kind of love that you have for, say, an animal, the kind of love you have for a neighbor, a friend, a cousin, a brother, a mother, and even an enemy. Because in order to have an enemy, you've got to have a lot of emotional connection there. And we'll tell you in the higher realms, those who are doing some of the most, um, how shall we say, unsavory things with you, or how you perceive them to be when you're playing victim perpetrator, they are the ones at the highest levels who love you the most. You look around, you ask your friends to don these roles so that you can have an experience. As we always say, you know, you look to your friend and say, I want to play a victim. Will you play my perpetrator? And they say, well, I'm going to have to deal with all that karma, but I love you and I'll do it. And so they do. But you forget. And you just see them as your enemy. And then the next go around, they say, all right, now I want to play the victim. You get to be the perpetrator. And you say, all right, I love you, so I'll take on that karma and we'll see where we go. So you trade off. And each and every one of you has had plenty of dark lifetimes. We always laugh and have a good giggle when we hear you say, I don't want to know I had any dark lifetimes. But those are often the most interesting because they are so unlike your experience in the higher realms. Because it is disconnected. And you know what connection feels like because you, as a higher dimensional being, are always connected. 
take a deep breath. Any questions so far? Um, I have a question. Um, despite uh, what you're saying, some of us have that burning desire to remember um, where we came from, uh, what our true nature is, because those limitations, um, sometimes they quite a little bit too much. Uh, I don't know what it is uh, for us, but probably that uh, memory of freedom is still strong, so we would like to remember. So can you talk about that a little bit? So the desire to reconnect is there because uh, in part it's coding because of the game. The game is dissension and reascension. So it's already woven into the nature of the game. You descended down into density and then the idea was to come back up. So the process of coming back up is to reconnect. Now, your origins, where do you really come from? Now, we're going to talk about stellar alignments, if you will, because none of you are really from a system, a stellar system. All of you are source energy. You are divine source itself. So if you want to trace back where you're really from, you're really from source. Now, when you start breaking it out, there are different star systems that you have been to and that you're aligning with, but you're never really from a system. It is just another game. And many of you have also played in the celestial realms. You've played in the angelic realms as well. You're not just an incarnate or a, a, a stellar being. So this desire to know is really a desire to reconnect with source energy. That is what you're doing as you're going through the ascension process. This go round isn't about you going home. This idea of home, as you all start to awaken, it can trigger in you a longing. And sometimes it can be overwhelming, a sense of despair being on this planet, a sense of disconnection. But really what you all are seeking, again, as we said, is this connection with source. And it's not about bringing, going home. It's not about leaving the planet. It's about bringing home here, about bringing your expanded sense of awareness into the vehicle. So really through this process of ascension, what you are doing is bringing your higher self into your vehicle. Your higher self has awareness of all of your incarnations. It has awareness that you are a multidimensional being having a limited experience down on the planet. And as you start to bring that expanded sense into your vehicle, it's going to change the game. It's going to change how you operate. All right? And many of you have coded yourselves. It's like putting markers in your field to remind you, oh, it's time to do something. It's like uh, creating a, an alarm clock. And you say, oh, you know, I, I'm supposed to remember something. What is it? There's something about home. <laughs> All right? so that you get moving, that you get activated. And you all do this. Think of it also as planting flags to get your own attention. That things resonate with you. You don't exactly know why. You just know that it is until you kind of rediscover and dig around and, and uh, find something that resonates and you say, ah, this is it. This is what I was supposed to remember. All right? So that's in part why you're having this sense because it's time. It's time for you to remember and to awaken. Now, let us say this about 2012. You are existing within linear time. And within linear time, you will give dates and punctuation marks of when things are supposed to occur. In reality, as we said, it is a window. But you all gave yourselves a date. One, because you're in time. And two, because if you didn't, you probably wouldn't get moving. Because if you thought you had a window, you'd say, well, I've got another month. I'll get, it, I'll get it done in a month, all right? But when you know you've got a cutoff date that gets you all activated, gets you moving, and it is a coding, that number is encoded in your genetic material as a motivator, as an activator, as a key memory so that you can once again access the higher wisdom. So does that help? you 
Excellent. Anything else right now? So when you say, you said before that for a Cassiopeian to come to Earth, you meant uh, someone who's spent time there? Yes, yeah, so, so a being who spent a lot of time playing around in that arena, having physical experiences in that arena, when they come here, they've never been here before, they haven't perhaps experienced this huge range of emotion, it's brand new. It's like you going to school or you going to uh, an educational center and learning a new skill. Sometimes it can, if it's an advanced skill, it can feel a bit overwhelming. Yes? So you have that same kind of experience. Now, what will happen, and, and this happened... Um, this has happened where beings who hadn't been here before were requested from those within the game to come, to bring in fresh energy, to bring in fresh perspective because the game was getting a little stale. All right. So what those beings did was to incarnate here, but because they hadn't been here, they overlaid records, they imprinted records onto their personal history, onto the files, if you will, of what their experience was in the system so that they could have the experiences. Now, from where you're standing, it all seems pretty much the same. It all appears as if this was your life. So say a Cassiopeian who focuses on love uh, may have overlaid a lot of darker lifetimes that dealt with the destruction or the absence of love so that they could have that polar opposite experience in their makeup that they had something to refer to. You can think of it also as like uh, bringing books with you, records with you and you've got references so that you can go back and look at it and say ah here's something that I can relate to. And from where we stand, yes, they are slightly different in vibration. But from where you are, it's all the same. And this is, and as we always tell you, this is why you've got people who say, you know, I was Napoleon, I was Cleopatra. It's because they took them on as imprints. So that they could have this unique kinds of experiences where the setup was, <coughs> the circumstances and the probability of beings being able to have that kind of experience were rather low. The percentage of beings on the planet who are going to be leaders are fewer, it's lower than the percentage who aren't going to be because of the way you've all set up the game here. So you take on imprints and overlays of records. Make sense? So does that help with your question? Yeah. All right. Anything else before we continue on? I wanted to ask. Um, first of all, thank you so much for you guys being here, assisting us to remember who we really are. I'm not sure how I'm going to pose the question, but um, I'm kind of like stuck. I, I know so many things that came to me through books, and I've read so much material, and there are certain things that manifest to me, especially in dancing, that I'm a totally different person and languages that come through, even though I don't understand it, but it's more like a feel, and it's what gives me the strength to deal with a lot of density. But I would like to keep that state of mind, and I don't. I shift back to the lesser one and struggle. Is it you guys, or is it another type of being? That come through when you're dancing? Well, when you dance, and dance is, you know, let's talk about channeling, just as an aside here. So what happens when you channel? You open up your energetic field, you start operating through the heart center, all right? You're working through the operating system that doesn't have distortions. When you're working in the mind, the mind was created and generated to create distortions so you wouldn't see the other probability re probable realities going on beside you, so that you would think that you're separate from source. That was the setup for the game, and you all created the mind. You all created the mind. It's an illusion. It was the operating system. It was a way for you to keep attachments. Because about 300,000 years ago, you all could switch back and forth between your operating systems. And you knew that you were multidimensional beings and you wanted to be in density, but you couldn't stay in density. You kept popping out because you remembered you were creator beings. Oops. <laughs> so you created the mind to keep you in. 
And once you started the illusion of the mind, it went very, very quickly. The more you forgot, the faster you forgot. The faster you forgot, the more you forgot. And it works the same way as you go up. The more you remember, the faster you remember. The faster you remember, the more you remember. And this is what's happening right now as you're going back up. So channeling is bringing in energy and putting it into a recognizable form. So what happens literally is your energy goes up beyond the third dimensional barrier of the mind. You switch operating systems basically. You increase your level of consciousness above the third dimensional level. And our energy comes down and you interpret the frequency and you translate it and then you express it. This evening, Wendy's expressing it through word. But it could very well be done through painting, drawing, singing, dancing, acting, any creative endeavor, creating pottery, doesn't matter. It's an expression of that vibration into physical reality. Now, where does that energy come from? It can come from a variety of places. It can come from your higher self. It can come from your angelic guides. It can come from celestial beings, ETs. It can come from the dearly departed. It can also come from the Akashic Records. So it's just frequency that you can tap into. And more often than not, most of you are tapping into your higher, higher selves and that's what's really coming through. An expanded version, trying to remind yourselves of things, so you're bringing it through. You're bringing through your memories of things that you loved, things that you love to do. You may find that you're somebody who is very proficient at working with pottery or you may be an amazing painter and you think, I've never painted before in my life, where is this coming from? But you have memories of doing it and you had so much joy and love for it that you wanted to pull it through again and play with it. And this will happen more and more as you start to integrate more of your higher selves into your vehicles. You're going to remember more of these lifetimes where you had these skills and doing things that you absolutely love to do. It doesn't mean that you have to do them again, but you may rediscover them. All right, so back to the stellar systems. So as you are pulling in energy from other systems, which you all are doing, you're working with other aspects of yourself, you're working with uh, ETs, Celestials, and the Angelics. You're pulling in the wisdom and knowledge from a system because you've contracted to do so. Each of you has, no, well, each of you has at least two systems that you are trying to assist, all right, that you are contracted to pull in wisdom for. Some of you have dozens that you are trying to work and integrate information from these systems into your current version of reality. Do you all understand what we mean by that? Mm -hmm. So let's take, as we said before, the Sirius star system. In the Sirius star system, their focus of their game is working on competition. It's on working on diversity. They work on exploration and technology. Um, they also work with the notion of cooperation, competition, cooperation, those usually go hand in hand. So if you're aligning with that system, you're going to pull those very issues into your current life. So you're going to work on competition, cooperation, you're going to work on diversity, you're going to be an explorer. So again, you're going to work on it on a smaller scale. So when you feel, oh, I'm aligned with this system, this is my home, it's because you're aligning with the lessons of that system. Each system is like a little game. Uh, there are things that you focus and specialize in particular dimensions and in particular sectors of the galaxy. So the Orion system is very much tied into that of the Sirius star system. There's a lot of interplay and exchange between the two. Karmically, they are interlinked. 
both are very diverse in their life forms. And many of the, the very issues that the Syrians work on, the Orions also work on. Competition, cooperation, those are big ones. Compassion is there. Um, origins and working with genetic material. The Orions are fascinated with genetic material. And the um, hybridization, again, this goes back somewhat to cooperation. When you try to start blending the hybridization uh, of the species, uh, you, you can start to work out some of the issues because you're going to get the issues in a single being as opposed to coming from opposite sides. So they're fascinated with genetics and they're, they're very good at working with it. They also are explorers but they like to explore from a different standpoint. There are many in the Sirius star system who are explorers but they do it to, for conquest. They do it for expansion where many of the Orions are doing it to help them work with um, to work with the DNA. They also uh, they also are many of the scientists who are on the planet right now who are working with your plants, who are working with your animals to clone, to hybridize. Many of these beings have spent a lot of time in the Orion system. And as well, Atlantis because that was the last time that you played this game on the planet where you played around with genetic material. It was the last time your science was high enough, that your awareness and understanding of, of the genes were high enough. With the fall of Atlantis, that information um, was hidden, shall we say, forgotten. It was retained in the crystalline records, but most of you forgot and most of you are still unaware, the average person has no idea. So that's what's going on in the Orion system. Now most of the beings that uh, are coming from the Orion system that you are interacting with tend to be fourth, fifth and sixth dimensional. All right. Now again, dimensions, just different games, different things that you focus on. Once you get above the third dimensional level, you have a multi-dimensional perspective. You know that you are part of a collective again, as we were saying. You can still see yourself as an individual, but there are different things that you kind of play around with and experience. The fourth dimension is a transitory dimension. The fifth dimension, you begin to work with the notion of bilocation. You begin to work with the understanding that you can manipulate timelines. You can begin to do time jumping, which is basically <clears throat> projecting self projecting your light, your soul's essence, to another point in time. Time's not linear. It is a marker for an event, and you can project yourself anywhere that you wish. And that starts happening at the fifth dimensional level where you can simply project yourself into different timelines. Now, there are also restrictions that are placed on time jumping and the manipulation of timelines. Uh, if you want to talk about your galactic federation, we have observed, we've watched what's gone on, and there have been beings who have been observing and watching but also participating, and they are not of the original timeline, and so when they start to participate, there is the potential to alter the timeline to such an extent that it can destroy the timeline. And so, as a collective, we all agreed that timeline jumping would be monitored. So if you're not of a timeline, you can't really participate, you can only observe. All right? But if you're participating, it has to be at a level in which it doesn't interfere. Your sci-fis are pretty close to how things exist in the higher realms. All right, with the organizations and the, the initiatives. They're pretty close. So when we tell you about these things, you say, well, that, that just sounds like fantasy. <laughs> well, where do you think you're getting your ideas and inspiration from in the first place? Reality, or a version of reality. In the Arcturus system, 
The Arcturus system, many of the beings you're going to find from there are going to be from the 6th to the 8th dimension. That's where most of the beings are. Now there's some in the lower dimensions as well, but most are coming in the higher realms. And in that system, they are very proficient at working with the language of light. The language of light is a universal language. It is light, sacred geometry, and the vibration of matter. All right? So it's a full encoding. When you get to the lower dimension here, because of how you're operating, the brain or the mind is parsing out the language of light because there's too much data and the brain says this doesn't compute I don't know what to do with this there's symbols sacred geometry don't know what it is going out the window so all you hear is pretty singing for most of you the heart center if you're allowing yourself to process it through the heart is going to experience all this it's going to see the language of light it's going to see the colors it's going to see the sacred geometry and you're going to know the information the translation They're proficient at working with the language of light. The Arcturans have integrated a lot of their own duality. They don't have a lot of judgment. They're not really charged. So they go into other systems and they assist beings who are having a difficult time. You could think of them as arbitrators. And they work with the language of light to do so. Now if you've got two people who are having a challenging time and are on opposing sides, when they come before each other, because they're still operating under the laws of attraction and reflection, one's going to trigger the other. But if you've got a neutral party, it makes it much easier. And that's what the Arcturans do. The Arcturans are also working with you, with your crop circles. Much of the information that you are receiving through your crop circles is being deposited by the Arcturans. They're assisting you. Now, not all crop circles are vibrations that are being projected by the Arcturans. Some of them are also vibrations of the planet herself as she is giving you codings. She's receiving signals that, be, that are being sent from the sun. The sun is the metronome, if you will, for your solar system that keeps everything on track, on pace. And the sun is sending signals to the earth, reminding her it's time to do certain things. And she is bringing up these sacred geometrical patterns, bringing up these... Uh, images that are encoded. Now, you as a human being don't have to know literally what these encodings mean, but if you sit and process it through your heart center, if you feel it in your heart center, you're going to know. Say, so, oh, well, this feels like this has to do with what region of space we're moving through, and it's about uh, waking up. It's about treating Earth with respect. I don't know where it comes from, but this is what I feel. All right, so process it through the heart. Now the Lyrans, or Lyrans, however you like to say it, a good portion of the Lyrans are from five to seven, all right, from the fifth dimension to the seventh dimension. Now the Lyrans were amongst some of the earliest inhabitants on planet Earth. Your Lemurian civilization was seeded from Lyrans who decided they wanted to come to Earth. Now, there have been great wars in the Lyran star system, and, and Earth was a refuge for many of the Lyrans during these times. And the Lyrans are proficient with sacred geometry and mathematics. They're also proficient healers. So the Lyrans descended and created what you consider to be Lemuria today. Now, as we mentioned, there were two other grand experiments. One of them was in the Lyran star system. Didn't work so well. And many of those Lyrans came to Earth to try to repeat the experiment. So you may have been a Lyran who came to Lemuria, stayed with Lemuria until it went through the ascension process and said, all right, I'll continue on to Atlantis. Played around in Atlantis for a while, and then continued on until here you are today. And you've been through the full cycle, from one grand experiment to the next. Now, the 
those who came during the time of Lemuria still had an awareness that they were multidimensional. Remember, this is a dissension process, so they came down through the dissension. And some decided they didn't want to go any farther, so they went back to Lyra. And as we said, others decided to continue the dissension process into Atlantis and start incarnating into that society. Some simply went still in, the, in their Lemurian bodies because the body was designed to live for hundreds and hundreds and some even when you're in the higher dimensional realm as they were for thousands. They could alter the, the structure. It's child's play. So they were going for thousands of years without requiring a new body. The only reason you require a new body today is because you get locked into the lower frequencies and the body can't repair itself fast enough. So it ages and dies. When you let go of those lower thought forms, there's no need for the body to age. The body is constantly in a state of regeneration. So there's no need for a new body unless you're simply bored and you want to start something new. How would that be? So the Lyrans, as we said, are, are great healers and all that knowledge and wisdom has come down through that system. Now, the Pleiades. The Pleiades you are actually a part of the constellation that makes up the Pleiades. We've been around and experimenting and playing around with Earth, helping to set up this grand design, this game, for, for a very, very long time. We are guardians, if you will. We are guides, if you will. We often work with young civilizations in helping them to grow and expand their awareness, parents, if you will. And that's what we are here to do at this time. That's why we're interacting with you. You'll find the Pleiades mentioned in most of your ancient texts, that there is a connection, that your Aboriginal tribes know that they are seeded from the Pleiades. And many of you will feel that you are aligned with us. Now, as you come down into, well, as you enter into this galaxy, there is a process, a step process. You will come through gateways and portals, and you'll spend time in each of these different systems, kind of getting your, your footing, your bearing. And the Pleiades is among one of the first stops. So most everyone has had an experience in the Pleiades because Alcyon is the central sun and it is storing all the experiences. So, you know, if you're going to enter into a system, you're going to come through the Stargate that is Alcyon. And as you're coming through, you're able to access and receive information through the library. You are a library of sorts. You are holding all the records and all the, the information about all your other lifetimes, all your genetic line, and actually you have other layers and levels within your field that you can access but you can think of those as being archived records. Most of that stuff you're not going to access throughout your own vehicle. You're going to go elsewhere to get it, but it is available if you so desire to find it. Now, all of your experiences are then downloaded to Earth. So all the experiences of everything that has consciousness on Earth is being stored in Mother Earth. She in turn sends her information off with all the other planets in the solar system to Helios your star. Your star then in turn sends all the information off to Alcyon. So as we like to say, you are the paperback. Mother Earth is the branch library. Helios is the main library. And Alcyon is your library of Congress. And depending on what kind of information you want, you can go to a different kind of library. Sometimes you can get the book that you're looking for from the local library. Sometimes you've got to go off. All right? As above, so below. You've recreated many of the systems that you've got on this planet because they are how they exist in the higher realms. But as we say, you step through into these energetic realms and you will come through a series of gate, gateways and step down your vibration to play in these different dimensions. So most of you have been at some point at least through one of these systems that we've just talked about. Now, the other major systems that are also participating 
Cassiopeia, as we mentioned before, where they're focusing on love. And then you've also got Andromedia, and Andromeda, Andromedia uh, Galaxy, which is right next door. And there is an exchange because it is so close. It's, it's, um, it's usually where other beings are coming from in the universal game. They're usually coming through the Andromedian galaxy into this one. And they are also participating. They're very, very curious in that galaxy. They're very creative. They're very, um, they can be really analytical as well. They are proficient at working with tone and sound, very much like the Lyrans, by the way. The Lyrans are proficient with utilizing tone and sound. And this is where much of your knowledge that you use through Lemuria and then again through Atlantis comes from. It comes from the Lyran star system. So if you're somebody who likes sound, you've probably spent a good deal of time in the Lyran star system. It's where you learned it. Everybody take a nice deep breath. So these are the major systems that you're pulling your history from. And as we said, there are a number of other species who've been playing out the same game. You've got your felines, so that literally they look like, uh, and these, all these beings that we're talking about, they are, for the most part, humanoid, humanoid hybrids. All right, so you've got humanoids who, who look pretty much like you do. And then you've got the felines who have cat-like faces, the bird people who look bird-like, Reptilians, and by the way, many of the reptilians that you are interacting with or that you are fearing on this planet are in fact Pleiadian. How's that for a mind bender? <laughs> so there are light and dark aspects to all of us, all right? And you can't just lump uh, one system with one group of people, all right? So you've got, you've got duality in, in all systems. So you've also got the AI collective, the artificial intelligence collective that is interacting. Uh, the felines and the artificial intelligence have had lots of wars in the Lyran and the Arcturan systems where it's been about control, it's been about manipulation, and it has been about sovereignty. So although you've got beings who aren't biological, they were technologically assembled, if you will. They still have souls who have incarnated into the vehicle. And it really is no different because it's still made of the same building blocks as the rest of the universe. It was just composed in a slightly different way. And so there's a lot of um, discrimination that goes on, that they're not full-fledged beings, that they're second-class citizens, if you will. Does this sound familiar to anything that's gone on on your planet? So these galactic games are being played out again here. So although the AI may not be entirely your seedings, you're not getting genetic material necessarily from them, they are certainly a participant in this game. And it's really within, within the last seven years that you have started to integrate some of the knowledge and wisdom about your technology to help work with their programs, to help work with some of the issues that help to integrate the discrimination, the prejudice, and uh, integrate the issues of the, of the AI collective. And they show up from time to time, uh, sharing the knowledge and wisdom. And many of you are part of that collective. You spent time there, in those systems, playing those roles. Now, when you incarnate, you don't have to start uh, at the bottom and work your way up. You can project yourself any way you want to have whatever kind of experience you want to have. If you want to understand about the passage of time, you can be a rock. All right, rocks still have consciousness. You can be a crystal. All right, and you're going to experience time in a very different way if you're a crystal and not much is changing than you are as a person or an animal. But you don't have to start there. 
right? So many of you have projected yourself in all different kinds of places and all different kinds of ways. So you're bringing with you all of these awarenesses of these other species as well. You may find yourself someone who really doesn't like snakes and you may not know why. All right? Or you may find that someone who has a particular look or a particular vibration, if they've got a strong trait from that genetic line, it may trigger you because you may have another lifetime in which you were warring with that species. Perhaps the reptilians really trigger you. It may, or it may be that you align with the reptilians and you think, you know, you have a really hard time with the human body because there is nothing more repugnant to a reptilian than a humanoid. And when the reptilian looks at its body, it thinks it's quite magnificent, quite beautiful. But look at that, that smooth skin that the human has. How unattractive. And they're warm. They're not cold. How unattractive. So you may be pulling those issues and those memories and have discrimination about the very vehicle that you're in, inhabiting so that you can integrate that judgment that that species has for the humanoids. So there are all different kinds of levels and layers to this game that you're playing. But as you're experiencing it on Earth, you're just thinking, oh, that's life. <laughs> but we want to make you aware of just how many levels and layers there are to this game, how expanded this game is, and how important it is what, what you are doing. And when you start to expand your awareness, it makes it much, much easier for you all to start letting go of some of this stuff. Some of your judgments. Any questions right now? How are you all feeling? Good. Take a nice deep breath. So we think this would be a good spot for us to take just a few moments so that you can stretch, so you can get more oxygen into your bodies. And we'll come back and we'll talk about integrating some of this knowledge and wisdom and how to reconnect with some of your stellar friends. All right? So uh, we'll be back here shortly. Our pleasure. <laughs>